The successful club series is really interesting. For those of you who have been in the club for a while, there's different subjects or topics from the successful club series that helps us essentially just that, helps us to be a successful club. So I believe we've done one on uh, uh, effective evaluations, and then maybe someone else can help me. We've done a couple more, I believe. Jonathan did one on what was that, Jonathan? Okay, like two years ago. I hope this one sticks with you a little bit more. I believe we've done moments of truth. Oh, we did do one. I think we, I think we did mentoring early on. Did we do mentoring? Well, it's going to be like you've yeah. seen before. I, I think we did, but, but it, was, it was one of the ones we did probably two years ago. Yeah, this club is only two years old, and in the beginning we were doing things that we... Do we need to be timing? No. This is the best job of all. No, no, no timing. So get ready. Uh, but um, if you could, though, because I do not want to run over, and you know I have a uh, propensity to do so, if you could at, um, say, about 10 minutes, give me a green, 11 minutes, give me a yellow, and 12 minutes, give me a red, and that'll give me at least an idea. I don't want to go over. Um, One of the most important pieces of being a successful club is having an effective mentor. How many of us, I look around this room and see that there was quite a few of us who started when the club started. And for those of you who remember that first meeting, and I'll never forget it, Taj, who is no longer with the club, was our uh, uh, Toastmaster. We had no clue. I was the VP of Ed. I put together an agenda that I thought was correct. I studied, and we just flew by the seat of our pants on this one. None of us, none of us knew anything more than the next person. Okay? Our mentors, who started helped us start the club, did not, wasn't there that day. They weren't there that day. So we were on our own. I think we did a great job. But we're going to see as a new member how important mentorship and as somebody who wants to be a mentor, how important it is and what your role is in being successful in helping this new person along. What we're also going to touch on is even for the experienced folks, it's great to have a mentor. So, a mentor. What does a mentor do? It's really important as a mentor you know what your role is and that there's consistency amongst all the mentors in our club. So they take a personal interest in their mentee and they really help them through the process, especially understanding. Renee said the first thing when she came here today. Do you have any information? That's what we were all looking for. We had no idea what, listen, that's why it took me so many years to get into Toastmasters. All right, 13 to be exact. Um, because I was like, what happens in there? If they think I'm going to work all day and then have to do speeches, this is like, and I was in school at the time and going to work? No way. And I had this guy that was with me at school who was a big Toastmaster. Please, Gary, come to Toastmasters. And I was like, get out of here. What are you doing there? Okay, so it was this big fear of the unknown that you just don't know what happens there. How much work is it going to add on? And then how much am I going to get out of it? Your mentor is going to help you navigate through this process. Same. They serve as a role model, a coach. You have to role model the behaviors that you are wanting your mentee to take on. You can't be somebody who shows up once in a while doesn't really know what Toastmasters is all about, has no interest in reaching your educational goals, it, that's not the kind of mentor I want if I was a new person. So you really need to role model what, what, what you want your mentee to take on those behaviors. <clears throat> and offers knowledge and insight, perspective. It's really good to understand a personal perspective. What should they expect? What happens when you get those books? When you, the first thing when you become a member, you get a package in the mail. It's got books. You don't know what those books are. 
They got one for leadership, one for communication. You start thinking to yourself, hey, I thought this was just speeches. What is this leadership thing? You have no idea. You don't know which one to do first. You don't, we thought we saw the leadership book. We thought we had to do every single thing in there. Little did we know that there's a nice little cheat sheet that tells you for project one, you just need to do these things. We just thought, wow, this is going to take us years to get through all of this. And then what you ultimately want to do is you ultimately want to help somebody be successful. So, as I said, the biggest piece is easing that transition. If we want to be a successful club, what's the thing that we have the most struggle with? And believe me, every club has the same struggle. What is it, Stephen? Membership. Keeping members. People have to understand and I think Shelly said it the best when she came to and joined this club. You have to understand first, this is for you. And I, I, I had a speech a few weeks ago that talked about you prioritize what is most important in your life. And you should be prioritizing yourself first. And this is what gets you to where you need to be. Whatever that is, I talk often with different Toastmasters in different clubs and Everybody is looking to get something different out of it. But if you're not getting what you want out of this club, life will take over and you won't find the time to come. Learning the club standards and customs. That's really important. Developing confidence. Listen, we're all here because when we get, when we get up in front of this lectern, we all had a problem with that in one way or another. And over time, we've begun to grow. And what I love about this club is we've grown so much that we have a wide array of, of experience and of skills. You'll see some folks get up here and just want to pass right out when they get behind this lectern. <laughs> and that's in it. And, but they need to know that you're surrounded by people who feel the exact same way. That's the only reason why we're here. And then you have others who you've seen grow over time. And you look at them and you're like, I want to be just like them. And you pick little pieces. You may not say, I want to be exactly like them as, as it relates to their speech. But you pick things out of their speech that says, oh, that's how I want to fine tune my public speaking skills. You want these folks to participate more. Listen, being part of Toastmasters doesn't mean you are required to get here every single week, no matter what. Things happen. There are times you can't come. It's okay. We want you as a member, and we want you to work this program like you want to work it. Get out of it what you want to get out of it. But also realize you have a role in supporting the club. As you saw, this is great that we have this many people here. But Sandra knows and others know we have shown up some weeks and we've had barely enough to fill all the roles. We're still going to move on, and that's what I'm at my most challenged, uh, because I like to have a lot of folks here. We still <coughs> move on, but it just knowing that every time you're here, you're supporting the club. If you do nothing else but sit there and clap for the people. And then people want to quickly start to learn some speaking skills. <coughs> I should have it over to like this. Where's the, where's the clicker? <laughs> so as I said, there's also a role for a mentor with the more experienced folks. For those of us who have been coming here for two years, it's also good to get a mentor. Could be somebody who's been here as long as you have. But to get a different perspective and to get different feedback, you know that, listen, the success of you in Toastmasters, the success that you will experience is based off of the practice that we get and the evaluations. And I will say this, I believe we need to do the success series on evaluations probably every six months. Because I cannot tell you how important it is to get an effective evaluation. We talk about this all the time. Every club talks about it. I've, I was just having a discussion with someone the other day stating that I am struggling sometimes with evaluations. Not so much 
in giving an evaluation, but in providing the right feedback that lets the person know that we appreciate that you got up and did what you did, but maybe you need to do that speech again. Because what we don't want to happen is for people to rule, go down this educational path, getting all these accolades, getting all these certificates. They leave Toastmasters and they go in their work or in their community and do a speech and say that I'm a Toastmaster. I'm a competent communicator, certified Toastmaster. And they can't talk in front of them. It's not fair to the speaker, and it's not fair to Toastmasters as an organization. As a club, and I will get off this soapbox of evaluations, but as a mentor and as a club, we need to be saying, Listen, you did great. You got up there. You're no longer turning fully red when you get up there. You're no longer about to pass out. Your knees are no longer shaking. But you still need some practice in this area. How about if we do that speech again? So it's that whole thing about this sandwich feedback that says we're giving them positive reinforcement. We're giving them... Uh, and, and then you're giving them cons really constructive criticism. Because let me tell you guys, what, how, how do you feel when you get up here, when an evaluator gets up, it's going to evaluate you and says, you did a great job. Okay, can you be more specific? Like, what did I do great on? Okay. I want to know specifically, because those behaviors, I'm going to continue. Right? And then I want to know specifically, don't worry, tell me what I need to improve on. We're all here, we're all getting the same evaluations. So give me that and then end it on a positive note. You get to learn new skills. Sometimes in any job you're in, and including Toastmasters, when you're in it for a while, you kind of get stale. And it's good to start to have conversations with others inside the club and outside the club and other clubs where you can have really rejuvenate and get some new ideas and, you know, and, and bring it back to the club. It makes the club stronger. What is the benefit to the mentors? Listen, I say this all the time when I mentor folks outside of here. The first thing I will say to a mentee is I'm going to learn as much from this experience, if not more, than you will. I promise you. That's what happens. Because they have different opportunities and they're bringing different uh, challenges to you that you may not have thought of, and it helps you begin to think. I have a, uh, someone I'm mentoring right now. Every time I meet with them, I meet with them once a week, actually. They've already got an agenda. They are very organized. So they send me an agenda, what they want to talk about. It gives me time to think and document things and come up with ideas. And so it makes the meeting so much more effective. Um, and that's what you'll learn just as much as you do from the person you mentor. It helps you to remain uh, productive, do something for others, recognition. Oh, see, I've gone to this before. I've <laughs> benefits to the club. Listen, there are huge benefits to the club. When you're, when a new person feels supported, and listen, this mentorship begins before they sign over that, that check, that small check, and that little um, application, it's before them. If you have any, if, if somebody comes to this club and they come for the second time as a visitor, that, listen, that's the first time somebody's getting involved with them, somebody is saying, hello, we should have a group of people who want to be mentors, who understand their responsibilities. When we have someone new come in, that person should automatically, we know when they're coming in. Rarely does somebody just walk in the door. You know, we know when they're coming in, let's have a mentor ready for them. <coughs> more satisfied members, more satisfied members, members stay. This club grows and remains really strong. Higher member retention, as we talked about. Mentor qualities. You need to be available. You need to be patient. 
sensitive, respectful, flexible, supportive, knowledgeable, confident, you need to be alive, a good listener, and concerned for others. You really need to understand again what your role is. Okay? You need to be real supportive because if you remember what it was like the first time you got up and did your first speech as a toast in Toastmasters, you realize you have that experience. You should be able to share it and help and comfort that next person, the person you're mentoring, to do what they need to do. So the first meeting, sit with your person that you're mentoring. Orient the new member to customs and procedures. That's the thing that they have the most questions on. They have no idea what goes on in here. Why are you clapping? What do you mean? What's an archon? What's a grammarian? What is all that? What are you doing? And how does it benefit me? That's what people want to know. Because when they know it benefits them, they'll come back. <coughs> Explain how to sign up. Help with the icebreaker. The icebreaker is your first speech. It's the speech we love the most. But it is your first speech. And that's the one that is the most, that, it's the scariest. And not only is it the scariest, you're talking about yourself. So you think it's easy because, hey, it's easy to talk about yourself. But for a lot of people, it's not. So they've got this struggle of not only having to talk about themselves, but to talk in front of everybody, in front of this big table we have here. <laughs> the next meeting, make them aware of the resources that are available to them. When they receive their packages in the mail, go through it. Help them set up their educational goals. Provide positive feedback just on little things that they've done. When they sign their membership, Congratulate them on doing that. When they get their package and you set out their educational goals, recognize that. Explain the responsibilities. Um, and help with speeches and other assignments. Over time, um, start to share with your mentee how you benefited from the relationship. Let them know this is not a one-way street. This is a two-way street. We're both benefiting. Um, let, invite them to other events. When there's, we have a contest, an area contest on the 24th, and I know we're all going to be there to support Stephen and Shelley, as they, this is the first contest that they have ever, ever competed in. And it's the first contestants we've ever competed from this club. We will be there to support them. Bring somebody with you. Even if they're not a, a member, bring them. But if you have a mentee, bring them with you. Let them see. Let them interact with other folks in our district. Acknowledge their progress. <coughs> explain the officer duties. Explain who are the officers here. We have lots of. We have almost all of our officers sitting right in here, if not all of them. Explain the speech contests. And describe Toastmasters organization as a whole. So when you're being mentored, the mentee it needs to be eager to learn, they need to be receptive, they need to be open to new ideas and feedback, they need to be loyal and grateful. And remember, a, mentor, a mentorship is a finite relationship, meaning that those meetings and all that you do, yeah, there's, a, there's a true beginning and there's a true end. They may always be that person you go to, but the real formality of it ends. Okay? You reach that goal and the mentor is going to move on to somebody else. Okay? You'll feel comfortable, you'll do speeches, and eventually you become a mentor for the next new person coming in. So I would really encourage the VP of Education, Raphael, and the rest of the officers team uh, to really move forward in making sure we start to identify those folks who want to be a mentor, make sure that they understand what their responsibilities are, and have them ready to be able to mentor our new members, our new, uh, even our visitors. Okay? It should not be as a last resort that somebody says, oh, I need that for my leadership. Yeah, I'll take it. And then all of a sudden they're sitting down. It should not be that. It should be more formalized. It should be an easy transition for the mentor as well as the mentee. Any questions? <coughs>